been a hard day's night. No, not those beetles. Arthropods, hexapods, particularly insects. I keep saying hexapods and then insects. Are there hexapods that are not insects? Yes, there are, but this is not about them. For the purposes of this discussion, we will therefore be particularly referring to just insects. Yay! <laughs> What distinguishes insects from the other mandibulates that we've discussed is the fact that they have six walking legs, they have a labium, which we will get to later, and they typically don't have any abdominal appendages. Yeah, so what's this asterisk doing here? For the most part, the abdomen doesn't really have appendages except cerci, churchy, I don't know, there, there are many ways to pronounce it, just google it. One of the things that makes an insect an insect is a special mouth part called the labium, which is the fusion of the second pair of maxillae. This is more often than not the ones that we really get to see in the laboratory. Grasshopper mouth parts. The gold standard when studying insect mouth parts for the first time. So para some basic white bitch of the insect mouth part world. <laughs> insect mouth parts have evolved into different variations depending of course on the diet of the insect. So don't expect that this is the only way you're ever gonna see these mouth parts. Although they look different, the main structures, mandibles, maxilla, labrum, labium, they just look different, but they're all still there. Aside from the morphology of the mouth parts, the position of the mouth parts can also vary across different insect groups. Hyponathus, opistimatus, pronathus, ganon. It just tells you the position of the mouth parts. And it's not just mouth parts that come in a variety of shapes and sizes and forms. Ano ba With wings, without wings. With wings! Insects na pinag-uusapan natin. Insect wings usually come in pairs of two. You have the front wings or the fore wings, and then the ones behind them are the hind wings. Hindi laging ganyan lang yung itsura ng wings. Maraming nagbabago. Things change. Things evolve. Kaya paminsan, mag-iiba-iba rin yung pangalan. Another thing that we have to talk about when we discuss insects is the way they grow up. Is magtataka kayo, di ba? Mayroong butterfly na napakaganda-ganda, pero pag tinignan yung baby photo niya, parang, Oh my God! Anak mo yan! And that is because insects develop in three main ways. You can either grow up looking like the bigger version of your younger self, you can also grow up looking like a bigger and slightly older version of yourself. Or you can grow up looking like... That's some serious work done. For the majority of the insects that we will encounter, they can either undergo incomplete metamorphosis or complete metamorphosis. Distinction between hemimetabolus and porometabolus. Hemimetabolus refers to incomplete metamorphosis where the nymph stage has an aquatic habitat, whereas the adult form has a terrestrial habitat. Porometabolus is where the baby forms, the nymph, and all the way to the adult, they all occupy the same habitat, which is more often than not terrestrial. Combining everything together, variations in the mouth parts, variations in the wings, the development, and of course, let's not forget molecular data. We now have the different insect orders grouped as such. Most of the representatives in the laboratory are actually there, but there are some that are like, where are they? Lysonura is now Zygentoma. Homoptera, it's a suborder of Homoptera. Isoptera, it's in the clade Polyneoptera. Anoplura, it's in Theraptera. That's too many consonants in one name. Some scientists even lump Theraptera and Socodea together. Today, we're going to follow the grouping where they're together in Socodea. The members of this group do not have wings. They have very long thursi and that medial caudal filament, which is a testament to their old name, Physonura, bristle tail. In terms of development, it's a metabolus. Let's proceed to the insects that have incomplete metamorphosis, starting with a more basal group, which is clade Paleoptera. It literally translates to old wing. Insects under clade Paleoptera are not able to fold their wings neatly above their abdomen. Also, their wings can move independently. The most recognizable group in clade Paleoptera would be order Odonata, the toothed ones. They have strongly toothed mandibles. If you have a look at their wings, there's that rectangular patch somewhere near the tips called the stigma. Order Odonata has two main groups, Anisoptera or the dragonflies, and Zygoptera or the damselflies. Dragonflies have broader hind wings than their forewings, whereas for damselflies, the wings are more or less just even. Damselflies can fold their wings along the length of their body axis when at rest. Whereas for dragonflies, it's kind of like spread out like that. Hindi nila natitiklo. These guys are some of the fastest flyers in the insect world. As far as I know, they're trying to design aircraft that kind of flies much like dragonflies. If you have a clade, which means old wing, then you probably also have a clade, which means new wing, and that is clade Neoptera. Members of clade Neoptera can all flex their wings neatly above the abdomen. Under the clade Neoptera, you have a subclade called Polyneoptera. The members of Polyneoptera have chewing mouth parts. Most of their mouth parts kind of look like the basic white bitch mouth parts that we saw earlier. They also have abdominal, cerci, churchy, kirkai, whatever you call it, that. They have that up their butt. Their forewings, which we call tegmina, are often thicker and protect the softer, thinner hindwings. A lot of them are pretty stupid flyers. 
Earwigs are best characterized by their pincer-like cerci. The name Dermaptera refers to their four wings blend in very well with the body on skin. Orthoptera includes the grasshoppers, locusts, and katydids. Ortho means straight. Their tegmina form like a parallel straight line behind their abdomen. Them hind limbs, last pair of legs, really long. They use it for jumping. Boom, boom, boom. Mantodea is the group of the praying mantis. It literally translates to prophet. They kind of look like they're sitting down and they look very dignified. You know it's a mantis because those four legs, bam, really raptorial, helps them get their prey. Phasmatodea would be your leaf insects and stick insects. Kaya yun yung pangalan nila. Kasi mukha na silang phantom. Halos hindi mo nakita. Some members of this group have highly reduced or completely absent wings. Kung hindi ka naman makita ng predator, you don't really need to fly anymore. Termites. Termites exist in colonies. They have members that kind of look different from each other. Queen with this big ass abdomen, and all she really does is lay eggs. The workers, which kind of have clear, pale bodies, but like super huge heads. The reproductives, which would be your males and females, the future queens. They have darker bodies. They're the ones that actually have the wings. There is that certain point in time where the queen termite specifically produces next generation queens and their mates. The males will mate with the females. The females will kind of store up all the sperm that she will need in her entire life and then the guy dies. And then that, that female eventually becomes this queen and sets up her own colony. They have special bacteria in their gut that can break down plant tissue. Kaya kaya nilang kumain ng wood. And that is subclade polyneoptera. Pero parang may kulang. Kulang ba? What invertebrate zoology class would be complete without this dude? Your very own, yours truly, Ibis! This is from Order Blatodea, also part of Subclade Polyneoptera. Ito yung madalas na dinadisect natin for anatomy kasi napakarami nila. Let's kill them for the sake of science. The opportunity has presented itself. So tara na guys, i-dissect na natin to. Oh my god, buhay pa! So dito natin ma-explore yung general anatomy of insects. Insects. The thorax is subdivided into prothorax, mesothorax, and the metathorax. Each thoracic segment bears one pair of walking legs. Prothorax bears the forelegs, mesothorax bears the mid legs, the metathorax bears the hind legs. You'll also see like a really tough structure on top of the prothorax, which is called the pronotum. Parang shield nila. Yun lang yung nakikita mo sa ipis yung malaking itim na yun. Yung ulo nila nakatago pa talaga sa ilalim. Having a look at the abdomen, close to their butt, they have the cerci, which is present in both males and females. What differentiates males from females? Males is males have like an extra pair of projections in their abdomen called the anal stylus. Along the sides of the abdomen, you're also going to see holes called spiracles. That's kind of where the gases pass through so that your insects can breathe. The leg anatomy of cockroaches is fairly like basic white bitch insect leg anatomy. The features of the head are also pretty standard. You have your compound eye, you also have your right central ocelli, you have a pair of antennae as well. And the mouth parts, again, chewing mouth parts, as with many of the members of Polyneoptera. Kala nyo labas lang, babakin pa po natin yan. So ganyan po yung itsura ng kanyang digestive system. You'll also get to see the trachea, which kind of connects to the spiracle, so dun po mapasok yung gases. Perineoptera is also known as acercaria. One of their main distinguishing features is they do not have the abdominal cerci that we've seen in clay Polyneoptera. So wala na mga sumay sa kwet. Another way to distinguish them is through their mouth parts, which are postellate. Poster means suck. They suck. Socodia includes parvorder theraptera, bark lice, book lice, pubic lice, body lice, all the lies! Anoplura, a specific teen sign of your representative being pediculus, humanus, capitis, dead lice. Order Hemiptera means half wing, and this is in reference to the members of suborder Heteroptera. Members of Hemiptera have these piercing sucking mouth parts that are really elongated to form this proboscis. The members of suborder Heteroptera are the ones that many would refer to as the true bugs. Noon, sila lang talaga yung kasama sa Hemiptera. Kaya kung titignan nyo, pangalan na Hemiptera tsaka Heteroptera, parang pareho lang yung ibig sabihin. This refers to the texture of their forewings. It's not uniform. There's a place where it's thicker and then there's a place where it's thinner. Paano mo rin malala Na isa po siyang true bug. Look at the wings when they're folded over, and they kind of form an X pattern. It has this triangular shape right behind the head, and that's what you call the scutellum. There are some medically important hemipterans that actually are carriers of disease. Suborder Homoptera means uniform wing, and this refers not to the size of the wings, but to the overall texture of the wings. Uniform yung texture ng wings all throughout. Homopterans kind of have their wings fold over their bodies like a tent. They are opistognatus. Their proboscis is fairly short.
short. Many of them feed on plant sap. Some of the more popular representatives of this group would include your aphids, the ones that kind of suck on the plant juices, and your cicadas, yung mga maingay. Still, underclade Neoptera is a subclade of insects that undergo complete metamorphosis. Clade, hollow, metabola. Hymenopterans! Dito po kasama sina ants, bees, and wasps. Hymen refers to membrane because their wings look like this thin membrane. Another less known reason is the wings of Hymenopterans have these hamuli. They kind of clip the fore wings to the hind wings. Yung fore wings tsaka yung hind wings magkadikit thanks to the hamuli. Like they're married kaya Hymenoptera because Greek god of marriage, Hymenon. Many of the members of Hymenoptera are social insects with a really nicely laid out case system. Workers, queen, soldiers, scouts, they have different roles. Their features modify a little bit based on their function. Soldiers, mas malalaki yung size nila, tas mas malaki yung mandibles. May mga ganong variations din sila within the colony. Halos lahat na nakikita mong gumagapang na langgam, naghahanap ng pagkain, nagpapakain ng baby, nag-aalaga ng queen, puro mga babae po yan. Yung lalaking langgam, may pakpak po siya, it's relatively useless. So sperm donor lang talaga ang kanyang role sa colony. And that's the only time he really appears. Most of the housekeeping tasks of the colony, that's all females. Ano sabi ni Queen Bee? Who run the world? Girls! Lepidoptera literally translates to scale wings. The wings of the members of this group have scales. Kapag kahinawakan mo yung butterfly by the wings, makikita mo, uy, nagkakaroon ng parang konting powder yung kamay mo. Yung scales po yun ng wings nila. Two main groups of Lepidopterans would be your butterflies and your moths. Butterflies are mostly diurnal, so they're active during the day. The moths are mostly nocturnal, so they're active during the night. Members of Lepidoptera also have a coiled proboscis because they feed on nectar. May mga iba mga moth and butterfly na makikita nyo yung wing pattern nila. Diba parang mukhang muka? They kind of look like they have eyes that are looking straight at you. So this is one of their adaptations to avoid predation. Fuck off! Ganun. Kung ikaw ba naman yung hayop, tas makikita mo oh! at first glance, which is sometimes all you need to spook a predator away. That could spell the difference between life or death for a lepidopteran. Coleoptera! Beetles! Lady beetles, scarab beetles, weevils, the four wings, or what we know as the elytra, are hardened. Para siyang shield. When you fold them over the abdomen, they form a nice, neat, straight line along the mid-dorsal axis of the body. More commonly, where else would we find members of Coleoptera? Sa bigas. Yung healthy eating ka, tapos puro bukbuk yung bigas mo. Nakuha mo na lang yung kakain sa bigas. Hindi, ano po yan? Red rice po yan. Black rice po yan. Di ba? Extra protein. Joke. Diptera! Flies, mosquitoes. Two wings. But that doesn't mean that they have two wings. It's just that their hind wings are modified into what we call haltiers. Ito rin yung isa sa mga dahilan bakit ang hirap-hirap hulihin ng lamok at ng langaw. They just manage to get away from us every time we try to swat them. They can quickly adjust their direction mid-flight. That's thanks to these haltiers that sort of sense their orientation while they're flying. Their mouth parts are postulate, but that doesn't necessarily mean they just have piercing-sucking mouth parts like mosquitoes. Sina flies, they have lapping-sucking mouth parts. They still suck, <laughs> but it's just, it's more of lapping-sucking. They kind of... <clears throat> And then they siphon after us. Or the fleas. These are ectoparasites of a lot of animals, not just our pets. Ito rin yung vector ng bubonic plague. They have sucking mouth parts because they mostly feed on blood. Atera, which means no wings. Their bodies are flattened like this. They have long jumping hind limbs. And they have structures that we call tenidia near the mouth and also at the back of the head, tenidia. They really have a lot of ecosystem services. Detritivores, they eat up the dead, decaying matter. They help reincorporate nutrients back into the nutrient cycle. They are predators and they are also prey. Birds, rodents, bats. A lot of these small creatures rely on insects as like a regular part of their diet, source of protein. From a medical standpoint, they are disease vectors as well, especially yung mga neglected tropical diseases. Bugs, fleas, not to mention a lot of diseases transmitted by mosquitoes. A lot of our agricultural product plants that we rely on are all thanks to these plants being pollinated by insects. Kaya nga, di ba, nagkaka-concern worldwide over bee population suddenly collapsing. Meron ding insects that are considered pests. Ipis, langaw, lamok, hindi naman nakawala yan. Some insects are sources of natural products. Beeswax, honey, food. There are some countries in Southeast Asia, I think Philippines included, where we eat bugs. Intensive agriculture is very polluting, so I think mga tinitignan na alternative sources of protein. They freak the shit out of us, but we have to get comfortable with the fact that a life without insects would just not be life at all. Oh my god, natapos na rin sa wakas ang arthropods and I cannot thank you enough for your continued support through this four-part series, my gosh, four-part series. Not all insect groups have been discussed and by no means is this a substitute for like an entomology course. For you to really get to know insects, you would need at least one semester of a dedicated course, which is entomology. There are even college degrees that are devoted solely to entomology, as in BS entomology. Just because we watched a short 15-20 minute video about insects doesn't mean that we can go gallivanting about saying that we're insect experts or we're entomologists. We're not. It's basic features lang to. Just to help you distinguish them when you see them, you could make a good guess. There are so many more things that we could 
1986, I encourage you to go ahead and watch some of these videos. And these aren't even enough. Yan lang. We're done. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.